Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, please abide in my name is Plus. I'm joined by a special guest today, Tomo. He's not meowing, but he is like petting himself on the wall. Tomo. Oh, he's very, he wants some attention. One sec. Oh, Tomo. Who's a good boy, Tomo? Yes, you're a good boy, Tomo. My son, he just, uh, he, he sits in the room like eight hours a day while I record, just enjoying life in his little box. Taking a little snooze, right, Tomo? Oh, who's a good boy? Hello. Hello, Tomo. His eyes were like rolling back in his head. He's like, I'm a good boy. <laughs> That's me, I'm a good boy. Um, Isaac, that's where we're at. The last run, almost a little bit too easy. Anytime you got the D4, you know, you know what's happening once you get past a certain point. Dude, I love missing though, though. Zero CB3 ESOG, let me take a little drink here and then I'm good to go. Beauty, alright. Stats are not that amazing. However, um, what's, what's the real pull of missing though? And I do feel the need to point out, you know. We did get uh, Eden's Blessing, clearly. I wasn't, you know, I didn't notice that we had gotten it on a D4 uh, roll, but obviously we have. Um, missing No is similar to Teleport 2.0, except it doesn't follow like a flowchart of where to send you. It just teleports you to special rooms, which is why um, it's a, you know, you always want, there's a couple of different things you want out of this item, I guess. One of them is implicit, and that's teleportation. You know, you don't want to do your boss trap room? Good. You don't want to pay the cost to get out of a cursed room? Good. You know, you just pop it. The danger is uh, also part of the reward here. Because we want error rooms, because error rooms can have a very meaningful impact on the trajectory of your run. But simultaneously, we don't want to get an error room before we've extracted all the value from the guaranteed rooms. Item room. Shop less so, but... Uh, Definitely on these early floors, item room and boss room are both uh, very, very, very important. Now, in terms of like the actual quality of this run, it's starting out like a little not that good. Probably a more elegant way to describe that, but um, you know, we're we're sitting at uh, a below average rate of fire, probably slightly above average damage. Little Chad matters. Um, Ghost Baby, to be honest with you, doesn't. Not really, anyway. And then Explosivo's fine. You know, some people have slightly differing opinions on this item. I think Explosivo, it's a surrogate damage upgrade, so I'm going to be happy to have it for now while my damage is relatively low. So how are we going to play this one? It's easy. We hope for a boss that stays above ground and thus doesn't purge his Explosivo shots, i.e. Larry Jr. would be awesome. Just anything but Pin and anything but Monstro. All right, Widow should get this. Well, I don't know. Do you lose the shots when you jump? We have to land one on you first to figure it out. Following this, we're gonna um, use our. Yeah, you do lose the shots. I mean, you have so little HP; it doesn't really matter anyway. But um, please explode. Thank you. Um, we're going to use. Undefined, missing though, as many times as we can. Hopefully get something useful out of it. Yikes, uh, I mean, it is money at the end of the day. Not as super beaten up over it, but it's not really what I'm looking for. I guess I'll take a look for the shop as well. Um, the idea is fairly simple, you know? We got the kind of money right now. Got the kind of money where the kind of sweet day. Okay, there was literally no reason for us to get hit there. But hey, uh, Demon's Tail is working out in our favor. Now we can actually buy something and also still get an arcade on the next floor. But I'm, I'm really hoping to improve our damage stat a little bit here. I didn't even realize we had already noticed where the shop was. <laughs> None of this was relevant whatsoever. And the bright side, you know, gives us uh, closer to an undefined charge, but anyway. 
Day's been good so far. You know, I, I like Mondays. I know I, I talk about this a lot, but, you know, I'm, I'm working out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So, you know, every day's got its own unique flavor. Monday is like a return to busyness, you know? Wake up, you know, as early as I feel comfortable, go work out, come back, record a few videos, stream, record a few videos. You know, I like to finish that, cook a home-cooked meal, get the week started off on a nice little foot like that. It's a busy day, but simultaneously, you know, it sets the tone for the rest of the week. I'm, I don't want to inundate you with gym anecdotes, but really, like, the anecdotes basically come from whatever I'm doing in my life. And if I'm not doing anything else, that means they come from the grocery store. <laughs> it's really what it comes down to. Nothing in the shop interested me. Today's a holiday. It's President's Day in the United States and Canada. It's called Family Day. I know that, like, because Family Day is newer and President's Day has been around for a while, it makes Family Day sound like a stupider holiday than President's Day. But, my man, what the heck is President's Day? <laughs> Isn't every day the President's Day? You're the most powerful person in the world. It's close, but I think we need a, a faster bit of damage, and obviously that's not going to do it. Uh, that's uh, Our speed would be too low to be tenable, I think. Not nearly good enough. You know, it's unfortunate. Obviously, in hindsight, I would have rather had tough love, but it is what it is. It's going to happen from time to time. Um, and, you know, Family Day, I think it's kind of a cool holiday. It's, it's Basically, it's a holiday that's just like, hey, take a day off, and we would love for you to spend that time with your family instead of just going to work on a random Monday and giving people insurance quotes or whatever. But because it's a holiday, you know, I, I'm never going to complain about my ability to make my own hours. You know, it's a positive thing. But, you know, one of our cats, and I, I'm just going to say, it wasn't the one who I just said was a good boy. Um... But he's still a good boy. Was uh, waking us up at like 6.30 a.m. to scratch the carpet for no reason. I don't know what goes on in the mind of a cat, but we have expressed to this cat in no uncertain terms, do not scratch the carpet, and especially don't scratch it when I can hear it. <laughs> then it's gonna wake me up. I would prefer if you didn't scratch it ever. I don't have control over that, but anyway, he woke us up at like 6.30, so like, the sleep got interrupted, I woke up a little late, I was like, it's a holiday, I should really get down to the gym early, there's gonna be a lot of people in there, and then, you know, I woke up a little late as a result of this, and then there were a lot of people in there, you get the general gist of it. Well, hmm. Health. I'm drowsy. At the end, it, it's, it's a hard thing to complain about, but... You know, I've been browsing fitness subreddits, and it's like, they, they have a weekly, like, vent thread. And the number one thing people vent about, and this is why I struggle to classify myself as being misanthropic. People are like, oh, NL, you're antisocial, you hate other people. No, I, I, I like people. I like persons. It's just, it's not agoraphobia, but it's crowds of people I don't like. The number one stress... Uh, not stress, but the number one minor annoyance in almost any situation is the number of people that are there. And it's not that, like, you know, they're necessarily behaving outside of the realms of common manners. Sometimes that's the case. But it's just like, man, you know, if there were less people here, that'd be cool. Like, there were two dudes, and they were alternating, you know, there's only, it's a small gym, there's only one bench, you know, for, for bench pressing. Two dudes were down there for like 40 minutes. They were just alternating doing sets on the bench press. And you're like, you know, it's not for me to say that, you know, you got your program on, you know, chestexercisesonly.com or something like that. But simultaneously, really should start getting down to the gym at like 6.30 a.m. But then I'm like, I have a go. Basically, I know it's a holiday. But I've become the guy who's like, doesn't anybody in this town work? <laughs> I'm like, I'm in the gym at like... 9.30, shouldn't you guys be in an office right now? And then I'm like, ah, oh, it's family day, that's right. Get a job, Mr. Lebowski. I'm not trying to be that guy, I'm just saying. I feel the same way, like, uh, you know, when I go to the grocery store at, like, you know, 1.30 p.m. and it's busy. I'm like, why aren't you living your whole life in, like, a 5x5 five five cubicle in a glass building somewhere? I thought that's basically what, like, you're mid-twenties to late-fifties were supposed to be like. What are you doing at the grocery store at 1 p.m.? And then I remember, oh, you know, you live in a city with a lot of people, and, you know, they might be tourists, they might be on vacation, they might be, you know, independently wealthy from the cryptocurrency uh, market. You know, you get the idea. They might have a license plate that says, uh, 
FDIC, LOL, etc, etc. Now, how's this run going? Badly, um, to be honest. With Right, I remember what's in there now. Part of it is my own fault. Um, you know, we could have had another item at this point. Uh, and none of the items that, you know, on that reroll room with the items, we didn't miss uh, anything that's like above a 6 out of 10, I think. But, you know, I wouldn't turn on my nose at getting a 6 out of 10 right now, especially because apparently all of our other item rooms are... Uh, Consistently not very good so far and then uh, our deal with the devil also kind of stunk so you know I, I, I take a pretty I don't want to say nihilistic, but I, I take a An unhurried approach to Isaac in the modern day and age uh, Just because our first deal with the devil wasn't exactly uh, something we would look to as being an incredible improvement for us That doesn't mean we're not gonna get there in the future We just got to wait a little bit longer just got to hold out that's pr stationary enemies with a lot of HP are great explosivo targets. Um, it just means we gotta wait. You know, we'll get another deal with the devil with more HP to capitalize. We'll get a deal with the angel or something along those lines to help us out. And eventually, the item room will indeed work out for us. They can't keep being, like, this bad. And I mean, even that's kind of self-serving. Eventually, there's, there's gonna be like an idiot-proof item room. I just didn't see that guy, and that's 100% on me. So many nickels on this run. Fiscally, we've gotten very lucky. You know, something's gotta give at the end of the day. You're, you're always getting some kind of advantage. Uh, very few runs have no redeemable qualities. Now, it's not like all redeemable qualities are created equal, you know? Like, damage, rate of fire, HP, those are pretty important. Money. Mm, less so, for sure. But, you know, we have Sack Boy, so basically stop your belly aching. Now, if there was ever a time for ironic error room, it would be right now. All I mean by that is, if you want to make me a little upset, take me to the error room right there. We got Guppy's Paw for free. Again, the theme of this run right now is Future Prospects. You know, sure, you you traded, uh... I'm trying to think of a Canucks trade where we got a draft pick. <laughs> sure, you traded, uh... Alex Burrows for Jonathan Darlene. But Jonathan Darlene could grow into any sort of, uh... caliber of player. He could even become as good as Alex Burrows. Now, that's not really a fair trade because, you know, Jonathan Dal I think it's actually Dalin. Sorry, my Swedish pronunciation is not that good. There's there's Dalins and Dalins, and then if you're Our Lady Peace, you go, you know, come, come, Dalin. But, uh, you know, he was like in the nadir of his career, but he did help out in the playoff run a little bit. And, you know, Jonathan Dalin hasn't really done anything particularly impressive. Uh, it's on the Utica Comets right now, simultaneously. We're hoping he finds a little bit of chemistry with his Swedish friend Elias Pettersson in the future. Regardless, what am I talking about? You see, you got me talking about hockey now. I'm all, uh, I'm all shook up, uh huh huh. Okay, it's our deal with the devil. We've been to our item room. Uh, I actually, because of the curse of not knowing where I am, uh, I don't really want to use Undefined. Because I think it's going to be annoying. No consumable. To try to figure out where we are and how to get back. So I'll probably just, uh, I mean, I don't want to pop it immediately on the next floor either. It's kind of like, you know, if you give me the choice between Undefined and Teleport 2.0, I'd much rather have Teleport 2.0. But the thing is, if you, if you high roll like the Legend of Zoldo, you might be able to get more error rooms and get them faster. With, uh, with missing though, no. with undefined, it's a, which, by the way, I keep interchanging those items, they're, they're, they're two different items, this is undefined. Missing no is, uh, re-roll your whole run every floor, no matter what. No deal, happy with the HP, not happy with pop 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 poker chip, pop pop poker chip. So I'm thinking here, yo, that's such a good room for us. Still great, even though the Tinted Rock was a pretty low roll. 
Um, after we see, I think this is a good bet. After we see the item room, I will feel confident trying to use Undefined. Which is actually, no, wait, it is Undefined. Hey, whatever, dude. You know, weirdo item here. Wow, that was a great shot. Um, it hasn't been that useful for us, nor have any of our item rooms. But I've mentioned that probably ad nauseum here in the past recent bit. Uh, there we go, we found an error room. I wouldn't mind getting out uh, of the error room, but that's not going to be possible. This is still fine. Um, I will tell you, I don't... I, I think I would rather black rune and get... Yeah, we got a damage upgrade. To not have the battery charge there kind of sucks, but... I think if you're gonna get something out of your spacebar item, you gotta you gotta give it a try, you know. Alrighty. <laughs> I was immediately like, uh, we're in trouble. Oh well. Still, where are we at? We're on Necropolis 1. At the very least, you know, I, I'm trying to spin us into anecdote territory, by the way, but it's tough, you know, when you got a run where you're on the fifth floor and your damage is like where you'd want to be at the end of the first floor. The good news is, you know, if we can somehow... It, it may not be that big of a deal, like, I don't think we should tunnel vision on it for sure, but... Um, if we can get to Boss Rush, we can teleport out. Now, that's not something I anticipate to be that useful, unfortunately, but... It is what it is, you know? I, you gotta... On any Isaac run, you gotta play the cards that you're dealt. It's like, uh, you know, Texas Hold'em. Oh, just get pocket aces, lol! You gotta, you know... You gotta work with what you're given. And, as of right now... Um, you know, I, I haven't really been doing a good job of working with what we've been given. Because we have been given a lot of bombs uh, that actually, you know, with homing, provide a decent amount of utility. Okay, Seraphim is actually pretty solid as well. So I am uh, throwing a lot of risk into the, into the environment here. But I do feel comfortable... I am so dumb. I do feel comfortable... Uh, especially now that we have a teleport card, using Undefined as an opportunity to maybe get an error room and pick up some extra items. Let's see, maybe we can capitalize, get the best of all worlds. We really wanted to see a guppy item here. Uh, and of course we did not. I will not take Curse of the Tower, it's, I mean, it's just extremely bad. Then, okay, what do we want here? I, I hate to say it, but I think Bloody Penny is, is probably, like, your best option. And this is... Still pretty bad, but... Uh, I mean, it's still really bad. <laughs> but at least we got out, so we got Mom's bottle of pills for free. I'm telling you, there's no world in which this stays at this level for this long. We're just, we're getting too many, uh... Too many, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not permutations. Just our sample size of, of item pedestals is too high to not get something transformative eventually. Alright, so... This Joker card, you know, keep in mind, it's a teleport card. So we can also use that to insulate ourselves from getting an error room. I like this run. I, I like this run because it's got me excited talking about Isaac's strategy. It doesn't always happen. And uh, I feel like uh, anytime you can get a run that, that tickles your strategic uh, itch in Isaac, and unfortunately it had to come with the consequence, you know, of the run being kind of bad to start with, but... Anytime you can get that working for you, you got to feel pretty good. This is a weird one, right? So I think you you definitely do this. Then you walk out, blow yourself up, come back as Dark Judas. Respawn in the Devil Room. Grab this. Now we got two-thirds of the Guppy equation as well. Alrighty. Don't care about the shop. Remember, we want to keep, like, Boss Rush as a potentiality. It was a very smart move on our part, to be honest. It, I, I think it's a very smart move, at least. I'm not gonna, you know, necessarily put words in your mouth, but... You know, now we got, um... A substantially better damage stat. DPS still lower than I'd like, based on the fact that, you know... Our, our rate of fire is 10, but it's better than 14, which is where we were at earlier. And 
And I'm kind of surprised that a run this offensively impotent still has a chance to make a boss rush. Far from a guarantee, but a chance. So my dream is I pop uh, after this room. Uh, I pop undefined. We get an error room. We Joker card. Oh, but the, is the Joker card going to spit us out in the error room? I actually think the Joker card, if we leave, would spit us out. Oh my god, it's working. Uh, in the room that we used undefined on. But let's see. I'm drowsy. Retrovision. I'm drowsy. Speed up. That's good stuff. Infested is fine. I can see forever is fine. Health up is better than fine. Blow this son of a gun up. Okay. Joker card out. Not a guppy item, but empty vessel's pretty great. And look at that, we're back. Alright. Whoo! <laughs> Next step. <laughs> we would love to... Uh, I don't mind fighting greed, because it's going to open up the deal with the devil for us. We are going to use our orbital to do some damage, which is going to annoy some people. But it's also part of the cost of doing business here, I think. We really, really want to get to our... Um, to our deal with the devil. Or sorry, our um, boss rush, if possible. And it it might be that it's not possible. I guess at this point, just, you know, hit me. Use the black card to kill, or at least maim these guys. Thank God. Um, not good enough. We can afford to be a little choosier here. Razor plate's probably close. D12 is not. It's my bad. Bean is not good. Keeper's eye is bad. <laughs> I mean... You, you gotta, at the end of the day, again, I can't stress enough, you gotta play the cards that you're dealt, but we're getting dealt a, a whole heap of garbage right now. Ansu at least lets us know where we're going. We got a minute. I actually think that's very doable. This room is slow. I mean, these guys are... He's probably dead. These guys are relatively tanky. We got 45 seconds-ish. It's so worth it to be able to choose one of the items at the end of the day. So, I'm thinking, like, the orbitals are gonna just kill for us right here. Red Mom would have been the best, but... We don't have too much control over that. I don't, I don't want to squander our deal with the devil chance, even though we've already seen the deal with the devil. Well, now that I think about it, it, would, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. We've done it. Boss rush is open. Grab this. I definitely do not want to use mascara. I think we have the speed to afford the virus, and we're free. So what happens next? Oh, it's, it's so simple. Um, we, we maximize our odds of becoming guppy. And, and picking up some other consumables in the meantime wouldn't be the worst thing either. Um, so the way we do that is we have a battery charge that allows us to uh, escape the throes of the curse room. And uh, no, nobody's going to love this idea necessarily, but it's actually working out real nicely. Um, with the Polaroid, we can throw a little bit of HP at rooms with many weak enemies and hope to get demon hearts like we just did. It's unlikely to work as well as it did there forever, but it worked really well right there. Like, this one will cost us a demon heart, but if we think that realistically we could get one or two demon hearts out of it, then... I mean, it didn't work out, but... Range up, infested, certainly not worth it. And uh, I guess we'll just very quickly go back and... Uh, we'll check our boss trap room. And the double key room, I suppose, is, is very sensible. I don't know, man. I mean, we're real... Oh, my, there's a Capricorn just sitting here? Uh, don't mind if I do, but I'll wait until we've seen what's in the boss trap room. I think it's probably worth, uh, I mean, it's definitely worth grabbing Capricorn. The only question is, is this a teleport card? Is a strength card? I guess we'll do boss rush, or boss trap, and then grab Capricorn. We could teleport, oh my god. <laughs> 
He's a genius! Um, thank God we didn't just leave on this floor, my lord. Oh my god, there's even more good stuff here. This is incredible. I've been waiting for this moment from my life, oh lord. So what, a, what an unbelievable assortment of goodies we've managed to pick up. We're gonna be at 3 HP! I never would have expected it. Didn't even see this the first time we came through here. Which is, um, I was Russian for sure, but... Alright, now I feel very good about using Undefined. Um, we're not really, uh... I was just, you know, I wanted to make sure I wasn't making any big mistakes there. I'm not really worried about not getting uh, what's available here. You know, on this floor, we're missing maybe a deal with the devil, which actually does suck, and maybe missing a, uh, you know, the boss item as well. Um, but I, I don't really want to skip the floor. I don't want to give that impression. But, you know, the idea is hey, you can do the whole floor. Get an item, maybe get a deal with the devil, or you can press the space bar and get the item right away. Now, at the end of the day, it's not really how that worked out because we ran into the worst error room in human history. Although, to be fair, we don't really know what was inside of the chest, so maybe. If I had a way to trigger permanent polar invincibility, I probably would have given it a shot, but, you know, my methodology, I wouldn't say it makes sense. Because the, the best case scenario is definitely to do the whole floor and then just get the error room on your last play. But you can't guarantee that always either. So I, I took a half measure. Um, and I, the other thing is I wanted to use it because I, I can't use it on this floor. Not without a teleport card at least. Because if we uh, get an error room, we get to go down to Shoal and then uh, not be able to progress further past that point. So I, I'm kind of handcuffed here. The dream for this item, and again, this is why the item is good. It's not just, uh, you know, an error room novelty. But, you know, we can use it to teleport. Teleport to the second secret room. Second secret room tends to be close to the boss fight. And, you know, Bob's your uncle. You skipped uh, two-thirds of some difficult floors. Um, and, and it does matter. You might think, like, oh, the run's so won. You don't have to worry about it. But, you know, we're... Incredible. We're one... Uh, you know, lost life away from really being in delicate territory. We should go back to just to see if that's a health upgrade. And we do have 17 damage, 9 rate of fire. I'm not trying to say the run sucks. That's not the case. I'm dumb. <laughs> Thank God I went back. Um, I'm not trying to say the run sucks. That's, that's disingenuous. I'm just trying to say that, you know... Things happen. If we lose this life, you know, we're going to be happy to have the opportunity to hopefully go faster through some of these rooms. Because uh, it's not set in stone. I will say, you know, no matter what guppy item we were to get, if we were to get a guppy item, it would become set in stone. It would be a pretty easy uh, transition for us to, to guaranteed win territory, I think. I guess it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm focusing like real hard right now, but if we get hit, we still get to deal with the devil. It's just all about our HP. You know, I want to give you an anecdote for like, um, this is how you know you're you're getting older, okay? Not old, not ancient. I saw that, you know that famous photo of the, uh, the GI coming back from World War, uh, oh dude, let's go. Uh, he's coming back from World War II. It's called the... Uh, I forget the name of the photo. But anyway, he's in a sailor's outfit and he's kissing... He's like bowing and kissing that girl in Times Square. You know, to celebrate the end of the Second World War. Classic photo. I saw that uh, the soldier from that photo died. He was 95. That's old. I'm not insulting him. It's just the passage of time. I'm 30. Not old. However, things have started to make me... Feel older. For example, did you know, um, I don't know if you saw it, if you if you follow the same people on Twitter, you might have, but um, Megan Trainer is a, uh, a pop artist. 
she got married recently and released a new album. I don't follow her music. I, this is just context that I gleaned from the tweet. The press release was like, hey, want to hear Megan Trainer sing about all the hot fluid transmission she and her new husband have been doing? And I was like, no. But, like, the press release is just one of the worst pieces of corporate media ever released. It's like, you know, we know it's bomb-worthy, but check out this song that she wrote and then also used as the song when she walked down the aisle to marry her hottie husband, Dylan whatever his name is. And then I googled, and I was like, Dylan whatever his name is, because in the photo he looked familiar. Is the, is the kid from Spy Kids. <laughs> and I was like... I recognize, you know, Spy Kids... It came out a long time ago. That guy was born in like the early 1990s. He's not... I, I just had to recognize that the, being born in the early 1990s makes you a full-fledged adult now. For real, like my wife is born in 1992, so... It's not like it, he's too young to be getting married. But when I read the press release, I was like, man, that's a weird thing to be reading about... You know, the, the kid that was... The younger spy from Spy Kids. Like, did his publicist sign off on that? Did they... Maybe... I don't know, really understand the situation, but, you know... As you get older, you know, you too will encounter situations like this, I suppose. You know, when I was young, Haley Joel Osment was a little kid, I see dead people. Now he's uh, Sora from Kingdom Hearts, and has the largest head on the planet. And I say that as a point of envy, because I was previously first until he reached uh, post-pubescence. Um, not a great assortment of items there. Let's let's level with one another. We are about to win, though. I just thought it was funny. I was like, hey, "Who'd she marry? This guy looks kind of familiar. It's like a it's like an adult version of a child's face that you know hits a chord in memory." And then, you know, yeah, it's a it's a, it's a little kid from Spy Kids. You know, the younger brother. Good for him, I guess, or you know, whatever. I don't know. It's not it's not good or bad for him. I mean I guess it's good. I mean I'm, am I happy for him? No, but not I'm not like mad at him. I just I, I hadn't thought about him since like the year 2000. And, I mean here's the thing. I was too old for Spy Kids. Not too old. You know I understand it's Robert Rodriguez's best reviewed movie. I'm just saying like when Spy Kids one came out, I was probably like 15. Try pitching that to your your fellow teenage friends. Hey lads. Want to go to the multiplex this weekend to watch Spy Kids? <laughs> I hear it's a rip-roaring good time for the whole family. You know, that's going to get your milk money stolen, and you're going to get shoved in a locker. Dave Hester's going to find you in 20 years and go, Yup! Yup, whoa! Hester, let your light shine down. Whoa! Dave has to let your light shine down on Storage Wars Canada. Whoa. Easy win. A little tough for a time there, but we got it all together before the end. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya.